Why don't planes fly over Antarctica? You've probably wondered about this before. Why is it that, despite being on the map, one of the most fascinating places on Earth remains so off-limits for air travel? Is it because of the freezing temperatures, the extreme weather, or something far more complex? Today, we're uncovering the real reasons why planes avoid this icy expanse. And the truth might just surprise you. Stay tuned. The answer isn't what you think. Every day, thousands of commercial flights take off from airports around the world, spanning continents and crossing vast oceans. With each flight, we're reminded of how interconnected our world has become. But there's one place where the planes never go, Antarctica. The southernmost continent, which is a mere few thousand miles away from major global hubs, remains untouched by regular air travel. While the average traveler may not think twice about the routes they take, the aviation industry knows all too well the reasons behind this peculiar airspace exclusion. It's not just about freezing temperatures or lack of airports. The story runs far deeper than that. So, what's the real reason that Antarctica remains off-limits for commercial aviation? Let's take a closer look at the many factors that come into play. To begin, let's first consider the sheer scale and isolation of Antarctica. It's the fifth largest continent, covering over 14 million square kilometers, making it larger than Europe. However, despite its vastness, Antarctica is located at the southernmost tip of the Earth, surrounded by the icy Southern Ocean. Commercial flights typically follow the most efficient routes, which in most cases means avoiding any unnecessary detours. Even though it's only about 10,000 miles from major global hubs like Los Angeles, London, and Sydney, Antarctica lies at the farthest point on the globe from most other land masses. For airlines, the economic feasibility of flying over Antarctica simply doesn't add up. Longer flights mean higher fuel consumption, more time spent in the air, and importantly, a greater margin of error. Every commercial flight aims to fly the most direct path to minimize fuel costs and flight time. And flying around Antarctica, for the most part, is unnecessary. In fact, planes don't need to fly over Antarctica to get to destinations in the Southern Hemisphere. The flight paths from North America to Australia or South America are already optimized to take into account other air corridors. In short, the detour over Antarctica would only add more time, cost, and effort for airlines. As travelers on long-haul flights know, aircraft sometimes do traverse polar routes, particularly when flying between North America and Asia or Australia. These polar routes involve flying closer to the North Pole, and sometimes aircraft fly in the higher latitudes to avoid areas of congested airspace or weather-related issues. But what about the South Pole? Why do we rarely hear about flights that cross over the Antarctic region? Well, the polar routes near Antarctica are extremely limited. These routes are mostly restricted to flights operated by specialized aircraft that are designed to handle the challenges of the polar environment. Polar routes in the north are well established and heavily trafficked, but when it comes to the south, there's a notable absence of similar infrastructure. For one, there's no large international airport in Antarctica. The few airports and runways that exist on the continent are primarily used for research purposes. These airports are not capable of handling commercial airliners, and the lack of supporting infrastructure makes emergency landings in Antarctica extremely risky. Pilots are trained to divert to the nearest safe airport in the event of an emergency, but Antarctica offers very few options in this regard. Additionally, polar routes that involve crossing over the Antarctic region are often avoided because the Earth's magnetic field can distort the compasses in aircraft, creating a challenge for pilots navigating through these remote skies. This makes flying over Antarctica an even more complicated endeavor. One of the most significant challenges in flying over Antarctica involves fuel. Commercial airlines rely on highly calculated fuel reserves for long flights. Fuel consumption calculations take into account various factors like the weight of the plane, 
weather conditions, and most importantly, emergency contingencies. A plane flying over Antarctica, however, would face a serious challenge. There are no nearby airports to divert to in case of an emergency. This means that airlines would have to carry extra fuel reserves in case something goes wrong. But carrying more fuel comes with its own set of problems. First, extra weight means more fuel is required to carry that weight, leading to even more fuel consumption. This creates an unsustainable loop for most commercial aircraft. And on top of this, there's the concern that if an aircraft were to experience an emergency, say an engine failure, the fuel reserves may not be enough to return to a safer, more accessible location like South America, Australia, or New Zealand. As it stands, the typical commercial aircraft flying over Antarctica would be pushing its fuel limits, and the risk is simply too great. For airlines, it's far more cost-effective and safe to avoid the region altogether. Weather in Antarctica is perhaps the most extreme on Earth. The continent is known for its extremely cold temperatures, which can plummet to minus 60 degrees Celsius or minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit or lower in winter. Even in summer, temperatures rarely rise above freezing. Wind speeds can reach well over 200 miles per hour, making conditions on the ground extremely dangerous. For pilots, such conditions pose numerous risks. While aircraft are designed to withstand turbulent weather, the sheer unpredictability of Antarctica's weather system makes it difficult to accurately plan a safe flight. The harsh, icy environment can also lead to an increased buildup of ice on the aircraft, potentially affecting its performance. Icing can disrupt airflow over the wings, reduce fuel efficiency, and in extreme cases, cause an aircraft to lose control. Moreover, sudden storms can arise from nowhere creating visibility issues and turbulence that even the most advanced navigation systems might struggle to predict. Pilots would have very little warning of these conditions while in flight, and that adds another layer of complexity when deciding whether to fly over Antarctica. While the geographical and environmental challenges of flying over Antarctica are substantial, the international regulatory framework also plays a significant role in restricting flights over the continent. The Antarctic Treaty, signed in 1959, governs the activities in Antarctica and is designed to preserve its environment and promote peaceful use. The treaty places heavy restrictions on any activities that could harm the delicate ecosystem, and aviation is no exception. The treaty stipulates that any aircraft operations over Antarctica must meet strict environmental standards. This includes limiting emissions and minimizing pollution, which becomes particularly challenging in such an extreme environment. Furthermore, the frequency of flights over the continent is carefully regulated to reduce the impact on the region. Since most commercial flights are not involved in scientific research or humanitarian aid, they're simply not authorized to fly over Antarctica. These limitations serve to preserve the continent and ensure that its environment remains as untouched as possible. So, what if it wasn't just the weather or the regulatory rules? Could there be something more to the story? The answer lies in the realm of aviation safety and the great unknown. Even with modern technology, there are still large gaps in our understanding of the Antarctic region. Despite satellite technology and real-time data from nearby regions, the airspace over Antarctica is difficult to monitor and predict. Sudden changes in atmospheric pressure, air currents, and even the lack of up-to-date weather data contribute to the uncertainty. Pilots operating in the northern polar regions can rely on a plethora of resources to stay informed about weather patterns and flight conditions. However, when they get closer to the South Pole, data becomes sparse and the risk of flying in such an unpredictable environment increases. It's a realm where even technology can't provide a complete safety net, and that alone discourages many airlines from venturing there. While commercial flights largely avoid the Antarctic region, there are exceptions. 
Research flights, primarily conducted by scientists and weather experts, do occasionally fly over or land in Antarctica. These flights are not ordinary commercial routes. They are planned months in advance with specialized aircraft designed to handle the extreme conditions of the region. Such flights often take place during the Antarctic summer when the continent's weather is slightly less severe. These aircraft are equipped with advanced weather forecasting systems and their crews are specifically trained to handle the challenges of flying in this isolated environment. In conclusion, the reason planes don't fly over Antarctica is a complex mix of geography, safety, logistics, and international regulations. From the continent's extreme weather to the lack of suitable landing airports, there are many factors that discourage airlines from taking these risky routes. But even so, the mystery remains. Antarctica, with all its frozen vastness, is one of the few places left where the skies are largely empty, untouched by the hum of commercial aircraft. And perhaps, just like the continent itself, it's best left that way. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more aviation mysteries. Until next time, keep flying high.